Hello and welcome to another modeler tutorial. My name is Emily and I'm going to be taking you through the creation of a rather unique kitchen appliance, which I think every home could benefit from. This tutorial aims to show you how we can use modeler in desktop mode to create quick product design ideas, even if the idea might be slightly unconventional. But hey, we're working in 3D, so anything's possible, right? Just a quick note before we start. If you are completely new to Substance 3D Modeler, we have a wonderful playlist that covers all the basic features of using it in desktop mode. I would highly recommend watching it before getting stuck in with this tutorial. Okay, let's begin. I want my product to closely resemble a toaster, so let's start with the overall shape. I'm using the cylinder primitive, but scaling it sideways so it's quite long and thin. This will help give us some nice smooth round edges. I also increase the fillet parameter so it has a nice bevel to it. When I'm happy with the shape, I'll press space to create it. After this, I'm going to select my warp tool, increase its hardness to 100% and make sure symmetry is turned on. I then make sure the side lines are at the center of my shape and pull it out. This creates the side panels for my toaster. I check it looks okay from different angles and then I continue. I can always pull the sides out further or push them back if I'm not happy with it. I'm now going to use the split tool in the arrays panel to cut up my shape into separate sections. This tool is brilliant for adding detail to simple shapes like this toaster. This also means that later we can apply different materials to these sections easily. Once split, we can then move or warp these split sections just slightly to make our overall shape more interesting, like I'm doing with this capsule shape on the side panel. I'll add a few more cuts now and then use the normal arrays tool to shave a bit off at the bottom. I can always add more cuts later. Okay, so for this section, we're going to start breaking away from our toaster model. Start giving it some interesting features. How about we make it a bit more like a games console? Maybe make a D-pad for it? For the D-pad, I'm going to use some radial symmetry, which personally is my favorite feature because you can make some wild things with it. I start with a rounded flat cube. Then, using radial symmetry in four directions, I add the four panels around it to make that cross shape. I lift and tilt them slightly so the button isn't entirely flat, pressing space when I want to create it. As we're working in the same shape layer, the four cubes automatically merge with our center cube. I can then add some details to it using our erase tool and move it into place. We can create a few more buttons to add as well. Now we're going to use a Boolean operation to cut out some space for a screen. I'm going to do this by creating a shape and then using a subtract Boolean with it. I roughly measure my shape against the panel I want the screen to be on. I ensure it has a bit of a taper and has round and fillet values applied to make for a nice soft shape. If I need to adjust it slightly after creating it, I can use the warp tool with 100% hardness, just like we did at the start to make the initial toaster shape. I can then right click, go to the boolean menu and find the subtract action. This will turn my selected object red. I then select the object I want to subtract my red shape from, as well as the red shape itself. I then go to the Boolean menu and click Apply. We can see the shape is now cut out of the panel. If I don't like the cut I made, I can always undo by pressing Ctrl Z, readjust my shape, and then go again until I'm happy. You can see I did this a lot. Once I'm done, I make a flat rectangular shape just to go inside to serve as a screen. After this, I made some gaps for my buttons to sit in on the panel using the Boolean and Arrays techniques that we've been looking at previously. To create the gap for the D-pad, I duplicated the button, made it slightly bigger, and then used that in a subtract Boolean. I also added a few more cuts and buttons to this panel just to make it look a bit more interesting. The capsule-shaped buttons, I used a warp to make the panel look molded to the button shape. I then added what would become a glass pane for the screen so it sits flush with the rest of the side panel. 
These are simple techniques to build up detail in your design that you can really get creative with. Next, I'm going to cut out some speakers in the rounded edges of the side panel. And again, I'll be using Boolean operations for this. First, I create four rectangle shapes within one layer, placing them evenly apart horizontally. I then select the edges of our side panel and duplicate them. We are going to use the intersect Boolean operation so that we can match the shape and curvature of the side panels. This is the same steps as using the subtract boolean, only I select the middle operation for intersect which will make our chosen shapes go pink. Once we have our new shapes, we can then place them on our original side panels to see how they will look. I then use the erase tool with a hollow cylinder shape to cut away the bits that I don't need. I also use the smooth tool just to try and make the corners a bit softer. Once I'm happy with the shape, I use a subtract boolean and then smooth it out slightly. I found sometimes fiddling with the resolution of a shape can also help with boolean edges. Now it's time for some toast. Except maybe not toast. How about some games cartridges? One tip here to mention is that when you use the non-uniform scale handles, you can actually hold down control to only scale in the direction you're pulling. I found it useful when wanting to keep the back of this cartridge flush to the original shape, but I wanted the front part to protrude. Also, while we time lapse over me modeling this game's cartridge, here's a completely unrelated fact. Did you know that when the Super Nintendo Entertainment System was launched in 1990, there were only three games available? Super Mario World, of course, being one of them. Anyways, back to sculpting this game cartridge. You can see that all of these techniques are super simple to pick up, and it's just a matter of repeating them until you get the shape that you want. All I'm doing now is adding these star-shaped screws to it and then just insetting them inside the cartridge. And then I just warp it slightly just to get those interesting shapes. So now we have our toast, let's make some slots for it. Again, it's just subtracting out of the shape we want our slots in. Remember, we're using this as a concepting tool for quick design ideation. We're not going for accuracy here, so a lot of it's just eyeballing. If it looks right, it's good to go. I then add a frame to it using a hollow cube shape with 100% chamfer, along with some fillet and roundness just to match the rest of the shapes we've created. Again, just eyeballing it to make sure it fits. I then make a few little LED lights to go next to the slots, just from two spheres, scaling up one slightly and then using the erase tool to cut out the bits we don't need. Then I can duplicate them and place them where I like. Now to add some detail to the other side panel. Maybe this one will add some more toaster-like features? Let's create some levers for ejecting our cartridges. I'm again subtracting using the erase tool, but I make sure symmetry is applied so that we get two the same distance apart. I then add a beveled cylinder that I subtract half of and then instance it so that again it's sitting the same distance apart. I also add a small cylinder on the side of the lever just so it looks like it's attached to the toaster. Now I don't want these levers to be at the same height as one of my cartridges is in play and the other is just sort of sat there. You know when your toast is done but it's too hot to take out of the toaster yet? Yeah, it's doing that. All I do is duplicate the instance of the lever and then turn off instancing for both the original and the duplicate. This should leave you with two separate levers that you can then move into place. Another little shout out to the warp tool is that in this scenario, if I wanted these levers to be longer or shorter, I can again warp them with 100% hardness to increase or decrease the groove length. I've now got a bit of room left to put a dial in. Because what toaster wouldn't be complete without a dial that you have no idea what it does? This is also fun to create, 
starting with a cylinder and then using the erase tool with radial symmetry so you can cut some grooves for it. Get a rectangular eraser shape and set the radial symmetry to about 30 and then cut slightly into the cylinder. You may have to redo this a few times just to get your desired result. Next, we can add a hollow tapered cylinder for it to sit in. We can then place it at the bottom of our side panel and then feel free to add a little pointer to it. Maybe use the triangle shape with some mirror symmetry applied, just so we know where it's pointing, even if uh, we still have no idea what it does. Um, make the toast toastier. So to finish up our model, I need to fill this empty space next to the cartridges. I mean, you could literally put anything in there. Another screen, more buttons, a cup holder, actual toast. I decided to make a hot pot. We may as well use the heat from the CPU somehow. This also gave me an opportunity to get a bit of organic sculpting in using the clay build up tool, smooth tool and the crease tool to make the broth and the food chunks. Personally, I prefer using these tools in VR, but using these in desktop mode works just fine. Thinking about it, there is probably going to be a long list of health and safety precautions that come with this toaster. Anyway, the point is that we can build fast product concepts from basic primitives using the techniques we've learned in this tutorial. Feel free to expand on this concept, add some plug sockets or some more completely random features, or see what other crazy products you can create. Maybe they'll be a little more practical than this one? Although I would be lying if I said I didn't want one of these in my home. I get hungry when I game. <laughs>